We're here today with Andrew Philbrick from Princeton Show Jumping, and he's also the producer of the Princeton Show Jumping series. Um, Andrew, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Great. Could you give us a bit of history of how Princeton Show Jumping came about? Well, I started as a riding and teaching horse professional, and I went to some of the local horse shows uh, in and around our area in New Jersey. And frankly, the horse shows were at a very low level and not a very good standard. Someone said to me, well, maybe you should run horse shows, and we started a small, local, unrecognized horse show series at our farm uh, in Princeton. You actually started out as a polo player? I played polo all through college, and when I started in Princeton, I was still playing uh, up at the Far Hills Polo Club and over in Brandywine in Pennsylvania, and I played two seasons down here in Florida. So it's kind of interesting that you went from one thing to something divergently different. Well, I had show jumped in high school, and I had already been to Europe uh, as a high school kid in Germany for a summer. Uh, but when I got to college, uh, they found out that I could ride a horse, and they said, you're absolutely on the men's polo team because in the whole school, there's only four, four guys who can even ride a horse. So I was <laughs> drafted, uh, and, I, and I really liked it, and I ended up playing four years in college and kept it up even when I started my business as a, as a show jumping stable. Well, the transformation at the Princeton Show Jumping series has been pretty dramatic, um, and in the last year, really dramatic, going from unrated shows to what it is now. Can you explain that? Well, we started with unrated uh, shows. We did 12 shows a year. I think we really filled a need for the local community because they always knew uh, that once a month in Princeton they, they could come to our show, and it was reasonably run, and it was good footing and good jumps, and we tried to have a a really positive series that was really local in nature. And as that developed, I, I decided we'd have a, a little bigger show once a year, and we picked the first weekend in, uh, in October to have the Princeton Show Jumping Classic. And the very first year that we ran that, which was about 20 years ago, we ran with a $10,000 class and a high jump and a match race. We tried to do something that was really different. And we got an incredible response, and we got, we got everything from people who lived down the street to people from the Olympic team who yeah. came to jump for $10,000. So that was very exciting. And it, and it got a life of its own. And as time went by and we increased the prize money and the competition got stiffer, we decided to join the USEF, the Federation, as a recognized horse show because obviously for the rules uh, and, and the structure, it really helped the competition. It seems like you really did the European model of including the kid down the street all the way up to the Olympic rider. Well, that was the basis of how we got started. And even today, when we were now up to nine full weeks of horse showing, I think we really still embrace at this time a, a really regional feel to our horse shows. Um, we do have people that are literally from down the street jumping in small classes. And last year, we had 10 Olympic riders at the horse show for the Grand Prix. So it really does it does uh, uh, have a broad spectrum. Andrew just acquired some new property very close to the former showgrounds and it's a whole lot bigger and a whole lot better. Can you explain that? Well, we have a tiny farm almost in town in Princeton, New Jersey. We're four miles from the, from the uh, university and the entire farm where we ran all these horse shows for years is only 11 acres. So we were always really challenged and it was always my dream to have a a better facility, a bigger farm, more room for the horses, more room on every level. And I kept looking and looking and looking, and as luck would have it, some property that was a sod farm that was formerly state property uh, that's adjacent to a county park became available, and it's 110 acres, and it's only three miles from our existing farm. So being a former sod farm, I guess the drainage was perfect already. We were lucky. The state of New Jersey did unbelievable. Everything along the roads is all with storm drains, um, there's spillways everywhere. It, it, it's what they did to make perfect sod farm, perfect uh, for us to do or to replicate would be incredibly expensive. Mm -hmm. The property, the ground is perfect for horses uh, and, and it, it really lends itself beautifully to horse training and horse competitions. So what do you have in mind for the future? Well, we started out uh, it's always been our priority uh, at Princeton Show Jumping has always been really two things above everything else, and that's footing and course design. So even when we started at the lowest level, 
with local horse shows. You know, our friend Conrad Homefeld, who's in my opinion one of the very best in the world, came and built the courses. We've had top international course designers. We have some of the best in the world coming uh, this year, uh, and and so in order to have great competition and in order to really care for the horses, you need top footing. And in my opinion, top footing is what's really been missing in our area. In the state of New Jersey, you really suffer. There are no competition grounds with international caliber footing, so that's what we installed. Okay, um, was that a, a really prolonged process, or you knew right away what you wanted to do? You know, I knew what I wanted to do, but if you ask 10 people about what the best footing is, you'll get you'll get 12 answers. <laughs> yeah. So it's very <laughs> difficult. So I, I in consultation with uh, with the person, the guy that built the ring, I did in fact have. Um, a couple of the top ring builders from Germany come to Princeton and analyze the sand and analyze the ground and we send all the material off to uh, to the lab to be analyzed and they gave me uh, a plan and 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 in in consultation with with uh, with Drew discount from uh, from his company we came up with a plan that we thought was a proven system of full drainage uh, with uh, a fabric layer, with complete eight-inch piping underneath, uh, a certain amount of grade. We have a one and a half degree pitch in every ring, and also too, we we really cared about the size of the rings. I mean, most people, professionals, go to the horse shows, and the warm-up area, frankly, is too small. So our our warm-up area for our Grand Prix ring is almost as big as the Grand Prix ring, and it has the exact same footing and drainage in it. Right. Well, if anyone's interested in finding out more information about showing or just coming as a spectator, how do they find you? Well, there's a website, PrincetonShowJumping.com. Um, if you're a, a, a competitor at any horse show, uh, of course, because we run a stable and have students at all the horse shows, we're at lots of horse shows. Uh, and we also, um, uh, so you can ask us, you could contact Princeton Show Jumping in New Jersey. Uh, we're on the web. Uh, as I said, www.princetonshowjumping.com. Uh, the prize lists are all available there, the list of the course designers, the prize money, uh, details on the facility, the location. So all that information is readily available. Great. Well, Andrew, thanks for taking the time, and we really look forward to great things from Princeton Show Jumping. Thank you very much. Great. For Sidelines TV, I'm Rob Jordan.